You guys reacted so positively to my last reaction video on Always Sunny where the gang got quarantined and I had a lot of requests to look at another episode specifically where the gang gets analysed. Oh, God damn. And how is the psoriasis coming? Has it gotten any better? Oh, it's not good, Doc. It's not good. I'm scaling up like a goddamn boa constrictor over here. Skin conditions can be manifestations of deeper issues. Well, you're not a skin doctor, so let's drop it already, okay? Fair point. But stress, anxiety, depression can manifest with physical symptoms. Usually, they're quite mild. Irritable bowel syndrome, migraines, even skin conditions. Sometimes they can be really severe though. There is something called conversion disorder where overwhelming emotions can lead to a loss of neurological function. You suddenly go blind or you stop being able to move your arms or move your legs. Sometimes you lose gaps in your memory. Interestingly, the mood stabilizer lithium has been associated with increased flares of pre-existing psoriasis. Don't know why, but it happens. I got beef with you. Excuse me? I am mad at you. Remember that cooperative dinner you had me have with my friends so we could try and resolve some of our issues? Well, it blew up in my face. What happened? Uh, screaming and tears and physical threats. Uh, Frank pulled out his gun. Somebody dropped the N-bomb. I don't remember where that came from, but it was messy. Wow. <laughs> but blaming other people is a very good way of avoiding taking any personal responsibility. The therapist's job is then to absorb it, reflect it back, and think about where the source of the anger is. Usually, the source will be internal, i.e. with D, rather than external, i.e. with the therapist. Who's going to do the dishes? And also, this is a great opportunity for you to see how insane my asshole friends are. You brought them here? Of course I brought them here. What, are you going to come to my house? Hey, assholes, get in here. Oh, you got to sort it out? Now? Just just sort it out. You ready? How long are we going to sit out there for? All right, listen, lady, I'll tell you one thing. I ain't doing these goddamn dishes. This is like going to be a nightmare in group therapy. I can't wait. Therapy is stupid. I don't trust the shrink. They screw with your head. Frank, it's the only way to settle the argument and find out who is the winner. The term shrink, which is short for head shrinkers to describe psychiatrists, apparently it stems from like Hollywood in the 40s where they used the term quite a lot and even that was based on like some Amazonian tribe that used to shrink the heads of their vanquished enemies. Psychiatry have done some weird stuff in their history. We've never really done that. I say really done that. We've never done that. I wouldn't know how. But it is clearly about much more than just the dishes. Yeah, there's, there's always levels. Oh, well, yeah, I mean, yeah. we're complex Jeez. people, yeah. you know? Yeah. I think that the yeah. 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 rivers run deep. And and yeah, I believe I can help you with this. Now, let me stop oh. you right there, actually, Doc. Uh, I can help you. You see, I have a background in academic psych myself. Uh, from an Ivy League college, no less. Not this uh, LaSalle. It sounds like a pasta dish. Dennis fascinates me. He's so narcissistic. Probably a psychopath. Max, pretty fascinating. But Dennis, psychologically, yep, I think he's top of my list. You know, sometimes I feel like, I feel like they don't even understand me and we're not even that good of friends. Ah, that's bullshit, that's bullshit. We're like the best friends in the whole goddamn world. God damn them for making me think otherwise. <laughs> there is a psychological concept that's called transference where the feelings of the patient can be pushed on and then felt by the therapist when they're in the room with them. It could be a really useful diagnostic tool because if I, as a therapist or as a doctor, am sitting there and I'm feeling a certain way in the room, it's usually a pretty good reflection of how the patient may be feeling as well. So I can use that to help diagnose, but I can also use that to help try and understand and then use that as a therapeutic tool. Here, even just sitting there listening and watching Mac, it's a bit overwhelming the number of emotions that he's feeling in quite quick succession. And that's probably a big reflection of how overwhelming it must be to live in the mind of Mac. Mac, let me ask you a question. Yeah. Do you often feel Strong emotion felt in quick succession. Oh yeah, and not just my emotions. I've had a slight fluctuation with my weight recently. I see, and how much weight are we talking about? I gained and lost 60 pounds in three months. <laughs> and Fat Mac was definitely the funniest and the best Mac. Emotions are linked with pretty much every human behavior, so weight and body image inevitably comes into it. And so much of Mac's self-esteem is wrapped up in body image. Wow, that's almost impossible. Well, first of all, through God, all things are possible, so jot that down. How do you argue with that? People used to cross the street when I would walk by. They'd be like, whoa, look at that monster coming towards us, you know, barreling towards us. Mac, you're not that guy anymore. Don't you think I know that? And I'm starting to think that I'll never become that monster again. 
Oh, so you preferred being scary to people. Yeah, lady, I was, I was as big as a skyscraper, and now I'm as tiny as a postage stamp. Oh, I get it. Cute. You leave this pen here and people are supposed to think, wait, that looks like a dick. A proper psychodynamic therapist would have a field day with that. So much of it is based on Freud and loads of what Freud said was all about Oedipus, you know, who killed his father, married his mother, and loads of it's about genitals. Mac, have you ever heard of the term body dysmorphia? Is that what I have? Is that what's making me so thin? No. Body dysmorphia is when you see a distorted version of yourself that no one perceives but you. Oh, but Dennis perceives it too because he's been giving me size pills to make me bigger. Dennis is like my best buddy. Well, oftentimes drugs don't address the root of the problem. Talking through the issues may be the best way for you to address your mood swings and body issues. Size pills. Protein supplements? Protein powder? Steroids? What do we think? If by size pills he means get bigger, which I presume, then that would make you muscular, not fat. And he's skinny now. You know, when I first walked in here, I was like, there's no way that this is gonna work because I just do not get the whole woman doctor thing. But then when you start talking about God, I realized that you're one of the smart ones. All right, let's do it. Let's talk about, let's talk about God and let's talk about how you're gonna make me more bigger. Bless him, he's put the willy pen in his mouth. Mm. Charlie? <clears throat> um, why don't you share with me how you feel the dinner went? Ah! Fire do the dishes! Headbanging is not an uncommon thing that you see as a form of almost self-harm and sign of distress. I've asked people about why, why, why that? Why that behaviour when you're feeling overwhelmed? And some people have described to me on, on several different occasions about trying to physically get these horrible distressing thoughts out of your head by bashing and bashing and bashing. You know, I love the dark, I love slippery things, I love being naked uh, in the sewer. Bleach smells good, it tastes good, you know, but it's just like, don't like, don't like uh. No matter what Charlie says, no matter what Trump says, never, ever, 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 ever drink bleach. Why do you think you're weird? I don't know, it's weird, I guess. What, what did he tell you? I'm not at liberty to discuss I mean, like, would it be weird if you survived an abortion? You know, would it be weird if, like, you shared a bed with a man who may or may not be your father? Well, again, I can't talk about... You know, about... it would be weird if you eat cat food to go to sleep and you have such a fascination with cats that maybe you glue cat hair in the back of your That's neck every now and then? information that you know, I haven't... I mean, and so, you know, like, is it bad? The cat thing's pretty weird. The cat thing's very weird. There is a thing in psychodynamic psychotherapy called a silent star. I don't really like it, but that's where some actual therapists go, oh, I wonder why you don't like it. Let's explore that and think about why. Anyway, the idea is that the therapist stays silent at the star and the patient needs to talk first. And that can sometimes be really awkward. But the idea is, is that you let whatever anxieties are there bubble to the surface and then they come out first. And then you know what the priority is that you need to start talking about and addressing. Let's talk about... I ain't talking about nothing. This skull is Fort Knox. Why don't you trust therapists? I opened up to a therapist just once. I was a kid. I got into a fight. The doctor asked me question after question. Got me so scrambled up. Next thing you know, I was shanghai upstate to a nitwit school. You know what a nitwit school is? I assume you mean a school for the mentally disabled. Yeah. Not just for nuts in the head, oh. bodies too. It's something that we see where past important and prominent relationships get transferred onto the therapist or onto the doctor. I didn't like that last doctor, so I don't like this one. What you just said to me, my dad used to say that to me, and this is what he thought of me, so that's what you must think of me, right? It's not a bad thing, it's something to explore and unpack in the session. Got my first kiss there. Frank. It was terrible. But not her. She was an angel. Always smiling. That's because she had no lips. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm going to hell for laughing at that. I'm definitely going to hell. Talk about the dishes. Oh, she died two weeks later. She thought she was a spaceman with a plastic bag for a helmet. So she was psychotic. Fictional, but psychotic. Oh! Ah! Oh. Oh, you unzipped me. 
It's all coming back. It's all coming back. I hate you. It's all coming back, you understand? I don't like it. I don't like to think about it. You unpack all that stuff for the first time in a long time, all the emotions come flooding back, and it can be completely overwhelming. What do a lot of us want when we're feeling emotions that we don't like? Take them away from me, please. Someone else come and deal with them instead. This is me saluting you. I'm a big fan of your work. How quickly you rattled their cages, broke them all down. It's not about breaking, it's about helping them. Mm. It's interesting, our thing, isn't it? To be in someone's mind, to have complete control. Dennis is so fascinating. From that patronising compliment and clap at the start to standing while she's sitting to walking behind where she can't see. This is all some sort of dominating power play thing. Why are some of these pages written in crayon? My file on D was started in the second grade. Interesting. Don't say that in sessions. Don't say that as the therapist or as the doctor. That's making a snap judgment in front of somebody and that's gonna send their mind whirling because they're not gonna know how to interpret it. Think it, but don't say it. Then think about why you think it's interesting. Then think about how you can reflect that back and use that as a tool to unpack things a little bit further. Tell me about these size pills you're giving, Mac. Oh no, that's more like it. So they're Mexican ephedra. Calling them size pills was an elegant solution. Uh, the guy was gross, it was disgusting. He was fat as shit, he smelled like shit, he sounded like shit, his groans, his snores, the sleep apnea, it was gross, he was repulsive, really. So ephedra is an extract from a plant called ephedra sinica. It contains a chemical called ephedrine that we use as a drug to try and raise blood pressure by vasoconstricting, particularly in anesthesia, where general anesthetics can sometimes make your blood pressure drop too low. We can also find versions of this in some cold medicines as decongestants, because if we vasoconstrict and the amount of blood getting towards the nose, then we reduce the amount of fluid that can seep out and congest us. The most common one is pseudoephedrine that we find in some over-the-counter cold medicines. Pseudo is a term that's thrown around a lot on shows like Breaking Bad, because pseudoephedrine can also be used in the manufacturing process of crystal meth. So that's where the stimulant effect comes in. That reduces your appetite, raises your metabolic rate, and that's where the weight loss comes in. Dangerous stuff in the wrong hands. You should do some quadrillion thrusters with me. Oh, better yet, get up on my shoulders. That's even better, because Mac. then I need more weight on my back. Mac, if you want to get big, take a size pill. Take a size pill. No, thank you. What do you mean, no, thank you? Good for you. Yeah, I want to do this the right way, Dennis. The therapist implied that God wanted me to have bovine hormones, and I think she's going to get them for me. Dennis, can I give you some advice? Absolutely not. Look, hey, do what you want to do in life, you know? And know that there's nothing wrong with that. Oh, what I want to do. Yeah. Well, <laughs> that's what I want to do. Oh, well. I applaud you for that. Absolutely. You oh, know? good. And now know that, of course, I'll come back at you with, with everything that I have. What do you... Oh. Oh. Get him, Charlie. Guy, get him. 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 How's that? Huh? You having a white Christmas? You having a white Christmas, you bitch? Stupid this ends Christmas. now, lady. This ends now. You got Frank all messed up. You got Mac not taking his size pills. You got Charlie thinking that he's well adjusted when he's the craziest of all. Stop calling me crazy. You're I'm not crazy. crazy. You're crazy, okay? You've been eating pigeon all day and loving it. You all eat pigeon. This group have zero ability to regulate and manage their own emotions. What they would benefit from is a type of therapy called DBT, Dialectical Behavioral Therapy, that looks at rapid changes in mood, often with coping mechanisms that cause more problems than benefits. It tries to help you identify firstly how you're actually feeling because that's easier said than done. Then why some of the coping mechanisms aren't very helpful and how we can try and implement new and better ones. And then as you start coping with day-to-day -day emotions a little bit better, you can start unpacking the deeper stuff. So thinking about why these moods change so rapidly and what's driving that and how we can try and improve our own ability to regulate how we feel. You gotta finish this, okay? Give us answers now. Well... I think we've made some great steps today. Do you? I like optimism. <laughs> I don't share it. So you want me to just tell you who's dishes. Dishes. You are a severely dysfunctional Dishes! 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 Really dishes! 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 Dishes!
No, bad therapy right there. They're angry. They've made her feel angry, but then she's acted out on that anger towards them. No, feel it, use it as a tool, but don't act out on it. Bad therapy. But I love this show so much. Thank you to everybody that suggested that I watch it. If you've got any more suggestions, please, as always, leave them in the comments below. Um, I'm, I'm never going to say no to watching more of Always Sunny. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, don't forget to subscribe, and I will see you for the next one. Thanks a lot. Bye.